This one simple mistake cost me $150 overnight just for going to sleep. And if this was in production for work, this would have cost significantly more money. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to walk through a bug that I introduced into one of my projects called Brand Ghost that basically caused a loop to spam a log repeatedly. Now, the fix for this ended up being as simple as swapping a couple of lines of code. It's very trivial, but that's exactly why I want to walk through this scenario with you. Now, if that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's go walk through this embarrassing mistake, and that way you can see what I was up to. Okay, so on my screen right now in Visual Studio, I have a very simple web application. This is basically just the weather template, and then I've removed the weather API because we don't really need it. But you'll notice that I've introduced a couple of dependencies that I've added in here, and we're going to be looking at a hosted background service. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit lower, and let me get this on screen a little bit. This is probably too far zoomed in for you, but if we have this service, it's called Nix service, you can see that it's taking in a repository as a dependency. So that was the other dependency right up at the top here, uh, right there on line four. If we look at what this does, it's pretty simple, right? So the mandatory method that we need to have to be a background service is execute async. It takes in this cancellation token for stopping. So in the body of this, what I'm doing is I just have this while loop. And I'm going to walk through, because uh, this is very simple, I want to walk through essentially what I had to worry about in my own application. I needed a background service that could essentially wake up periodically and then do some heavy processing and then go back to sleep. The problem is that I don't want this thing to crash and then not run for the rest of the duration that my app is running. So I want to make sure there's some resiliency there. I wanted to make sure that this while loop couldn't break. So we're going to check that out in just a second, but I want to walk through the base case that we have here. So this one is going to be very simplified in comparison. I'm just going to be asking the repository to get some data and then I'm going to write it out. So this is the equivalent to the heavy processing that I was talking about in my own project. So truly in my own project, I had to do a bunch of database query and crunch some numbers and then send more information off to another service. So there's a lot more room for error. And Truly, one of the things that I was nervous about was some of my SQL queries. I wanted to make sure that if I had the data wrong in some of the particular entries that I had, that that wasn't going to break the processing. So I would like it to be able to wake up and resume and I could correct the data if I needed to and then it would be okay for next time, right? Before we move on, this is just a reminder that I do have courses available on Dome Train if you want to level up in your C-sharp programming. If you head over to Dome Train, you can see that I have a course bundle that has my getting started and deep dive courses on C sharp. Between the two of these, that's 11 hours of programming in the C sharp language, taking you from absolutely no programming experience to being able to build basic applications. You'll learn everything about variables, loops, a bit of async programming, and object oriented programming as well. Make sure to check it out. Between the attempts, it needs to go wait a little bit. So for me, the duration was a little bit longer that it had to wait. I can't remember if it was north of 10 minutes or so, but it had to go wait. I'm just going to do it for three seconds so we're not sitting here on this video and you're bored out of your mind. But if we look at the repository a little bit more below here, this one's very fake. I'm not going to go out to a database. It's not really important for this video, but this is the method we're calling. It's just going to grab back hello world. And like you can see up here, we're going to print that to the console. That's on line 29. When we go to run this, what should happen is that we have this background task start up or this background hosted service. And that's because when we put it onto the container and start the application, it will automatically, thanks to ASP.NET Core, go run this for us. So it will basically sit here in this loop. And every three seconds, it's going to print out that it got some data and that it's uh, waking up after it's waited those three seconds. So let's go run it and see what the console output looks like. Okay, so we can see it waking up. There's the hello world, waking up, hello world. It'll do it again. And this will just keep running, right? So I want you to just conceptualize that we're doing some background work. This might be more applicable in your own situation, right? But this is just a contrived example, but it works, right? The situation that I had was, well, what happens if this part here can throw an exception and we're in bad shape? And what I decided to do was to be as safe as I could. And I wanted to make sure that I could wrap basically this entire body of the while loop in a try catch. So just to show you, it looked something like this. 
And I wanted to mention as I'm typing this out that I do have another video that is on exception handling and how you might want to consider failing fast or if you want to be more robust in your error handling. So different scenarios for that. If you haven't watched that, I'll put a link up here and you can go check that out. I should also mention too that all my console write lines consider that something like telemetry and logging, right? So for me, I'm not just writing to the console in my application. I have other logging that I'm leveraging, but for this example, we're just going to do it this way. So I decided, hey, look, if we're canceling, let's just make sure that we can break out. So if we'll put a break here. Um, that was co-pilot cheating a little bit. If we cancel, we'll just break out of this loop. Great. Otherwise, I just want to be able to log that we have an error. That way I could go make sure that I can observe it. I'm using a spire and I can check that dashboard. Make sure if I see errors, I can go update my data. Make sure it's OK. Let this thing run. If we were to go run this now, the behavior would be the exact same as we just saw, right? So let's go pull it back up. And that's because there are no errors. This is just working as it was. I just put some error handling in place to make sure that this thing can't get brought down if it should have a, a period of time where it wakes up and does something bad. So let me close this off again. There we go. Now, to simulate something going wrong, instead of just getting the data, I'm just going to throw an exception instead. So this would be essentially what was happening because in my situation that I had that's real, I was throwing an exception because of some bad data. And what I had done was gone to sleep, right? This is a service that's running. And I knew that I might have bad data. That's why I wanted to put this protection in place. But I figured, hey, look, I'll check in the morning. If there's any logs that show that it had triggered and something bad happened, I'll correct the data. No harm, no foul. Let's see what happens when we go to run this, though. And you might notice something very bad happening already. And this is exactly what happened to me overnight in Azure. Because I woke up in the morning, went to go check the logs, and I said, oh, no, why are the logs filled? completely filled with this one error message over and over again. Why is this happening and how can we fix it? Because the other thing that came to mind, and I didn't check it right away, but I said, my Azure bill is not going to be okay because I know that something's stuck in an infinite tight loop. So that's exactly what we have here. If we scroll back up, for some people that were watching as I was explaining this, you might have caught it right away. And it's truly not that difficult. It's just I was hoping that if I kept blabbing, it might distract you from it. The problem is that we have the sleeping part put inside of our try catch. OK, so I was planning when I built this type of thing originally, I said, hey, look, I want to make sure that everything inside of here is not going to be at risk of causing this thing to break. Right? That way we can go ahead and next time stay inside the loop. But that's not actually what we want. We do want to make sure that the delay is not within here. Because if we move it outside, this does give us that extra protection that if we had an issue with the data processing, which is what line 30 and 31 are supposed to be representing here, if we had some type of issue, that way we could say, that's OK. Don't worry. We can go log it and we'll still go wait until the next time we need to process data. I was trying to essentially wrap too much in the exception handling, trying to be safe. But the side effect was that it completely backfired on me. So if we structure it something like this, again, assuming this is kind of like sending up telemetry for us, this is some heavy data processing, and this is the wait period before operations that we want to go run. Let's go try this now and see how it behaves. Error something went wrong, right? You can see it happen again. And now it's actually doing what I would have expected. Is it great that it's going to add a bunch of these to the, the log? No, it's not great, but it's not sitting there in a tight loop filling the log. So at least for me, because my period was something like 10 minutes or so, whatever it happened to be, not just a couple of seconds, to see this a handful of times in the morning wouldn't be so bad. I'd be a little bit disappointed that my stuff wasn't working, but at least I'm not going to have to go sit there and look at an Azure bill. 
And that's how it ended up costing me $150 just to fall asleep in my one single instance on an Azure VM. My reminder to you is that when you're thinking about your error handling, have an extra look at where your try catches are. If you have to sit inside of a loop, make sure you're looking at where you're taking a break between your polling or your other processing that you have to do, right? So just make sure that you're considering how this is structured. If you're interested in seeing how you can add a global exception handler into your ASP.NET Core applications, you can go ahead and check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.